third, fourth, and fifth grade uh, ESL students. It's Ms. Caesar back with your activities. Okay. Right. Oops, sorry, jumped. All right, speaking practice, um, talking to a sibling or an adult. What do you see in the picture? What are the colors, the sounds you might hear? There's a lot of sounds, um, shapes, and feelings, and what is he doing? Why do you think he's doing it? And what do you think he will do next? All right, so the next part, I'm gonna, we're gonna switch to fiction. We've been doing a lot of nonfiction, which is fine, but I thought we would switch it up. So I picked this book, um, it's a bilingual book, so part of it is in, in well, it's in English and Spanish, so the exact same lines. Um, so we have two languages, and um, I picked The Wizard of Oz. Um, once we're done, I'm, you know, um, you could, there is the movie. It's a very famous movie, actually. Um, you could watch that if you, you know, are sitting at home, um, and you, you could do that, too. Um, we're going to read half of it today because it's a little long, and then I'll read the other half um, next time, okay? And then we can do our activity with it. Okay, so The Wizard of Oz. Okay, so we have, so these are just the, the vocabulary words, family, a wizard. A wizard is somebody that um, usually can do magic. It's usually a man. Wizards are usually boys and uh, witches are usually girls. Now in Harry Potter, you know, um, all the wizards can be boys and girls. So that's a little different. But in traditional fairy tales, that's how it usually works. And then we have brain. Then we have a lion, and then we have a guard. A guard is someone who makes sure everyone is safe. And, you know, if they're in front of a door, they're, they don't let people in and things like that. So those are those words. All right, here we go. Long ago, a little girl named Dorothy lived on a farm in Kansas with her aunt, uncle, and dog Toto. The family was poor, and life on the farm was tough. It's so gray here, Dorothy said. One day, I wish something exciting would happen. Well, said her uncle, you might get your wish. A mighty big storm's coming. Dorothy's aunt and uncle put her and Toto in the storm cellar for protection. Then they ran to save the farm animals. But Dorothy wanted to watch the storm. She snuck out of the storm cellar and crept back into the house. Suddenly, a tornado picked up the house with Dorothy in it. The house whirled and whirled. Then it landed with a loud thump. Dorothy peeked out of the door. Toto, she said, who are the, those people? They are munchkins, said a woman in white. I am Glinda, a good witch. You landed your house on the wicked witch of the east. She ruled munchkin land very cruelly. I'm sorry, said Dorothy. I didn't mean to land my house on anyone. It was an accident. How do I get home to Kansas? You will have to ask the Wizard of Oz, said Glinda. He lives in the Emerald City at the end of the Yellow Brick Road. Glinda gave Dorothy the magical silver slippers from the Wicked Witch of the East. These will protect you, Glinda said. There are other witches in Oz. Not all of them are good. The Munskins showed Dorothy to the Yellow Brick Road, and she and Toto set off to see the Wizard of Oz. It was a long, hot walk, and Dorothy and Toto stopped to rest. Dorothy looked up, and the Scarecrow winked at her. Scarecrows don't wink, she said to Toto, at least not in Kansas. Where is Kansas? asked Scarecrow. Are you going there now? Soon, I hope, said Dorothy. Wait a minute. Did you just say something? Maybe, said Scarecrow. I'm not sure. How can you not be sure? asked Dorothy. I have no brain, said Scarecrow. Just before the farmer put it in, the Wicked Witch of the West scared him, and he forgot. Come with me, said Dorothy. The Wizard of Oz might give you a brain. Dorothy and Scarecrow followed the yellow brick road. Toto ran ahead and discovered a man made out of tin. The tin man told them that he had been a real man, but the Wicked Witch of the West had changed him into metal. He did not have a heart anymore. Come with us, said Dorothy. The Wizard of Oz might give you a heart. 
They came to a dark forest. Suddenly, a giant lion leaped out and grabbed Toto. Dorothy whacked the lion on its nose. Ouch, cried the lion. I just wanted to scare him. Only bullies scare smaller animals, said Dorothy. You are a coward. I was not always a coward, said the li said lion, but the wicked witch of the west stole my courage. If you behave yourself, said Dorothy, you may come with us. The wizard might help you too. They walked until they, until they could see the Emerald City. The Wicked Witch of the West knew that Dorothy was helping Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Lion, and she didn't like it. So she made Dorothy, Lion, and Toto fall fast asleep in a field. Scarecrow and Tin Man called out for help, and Glinda heard them. She woke up Dorothy, Lion, and Toto, and they raced across the field to the Emerald City. When they got there, the guard told them to go away. But Glinda, the good witch, told me to come see the wizard, said Dorothy. The guard gave them special glasses and let them inside. Okay, that's where we're going to end. So I want you to think in your head a prediction as to what is going to happen to Dorothy and Scarecrow and Tin Man and Lion once they go into Emerald City. All right. So back we go. Hold on one second. All right, so we have a brand new graphic organizer. Um, it's the Somebody Wanted But So Then. Um, and I, you are able, we, you know, we started the story, so you're able to do the somebody part, okay? Somebody, who was the main character or person? I hope you could figure out who the main character is so you were so you would just put their name right there and that what did that person want okay so blank wanted what but what was the problem okay so what was the problem in this story okay and next time um, I will show you how I started this I know this is brand new but some of us have done this before we just haven't done it in a while so you might be a little rusty but just do what you can. Um, we can't do the other part so and then because we haven't gotten to the end of the story yet. So don't worry about those parts. Okay. All right. So last time we had a tiger story and I asked you a series of questions about tigers. And I told you that I was going to give you the answers this time. And I said, what is a tiger? And I said, a tiger is a wild cat that lives in a forest. List things that a tiger can do. And I said, hunt, sleep, move quickly and quietly, take care of their babies, and tigers growl. Describe how a tiger moves. A tiger moves slowly through the woods. Then when they see something they want to eat, they jump quickly on it. Explain how a tiger takes care of their babies. A tiger mom cleans and protects her babies. She brings them food and lets them play. Why does a tiger scr scratch trees? A tiger scratches trees to leave their smell on it. And then last but not least, I wanted you to compare and contrast a household cat with a tiger. So I said a household cat, you most of them weigh less than 20 pounds. Like my two cats weigh like 8 pounds and like 10 pounds or something like that. So they do not weigh what a tiger. A tiger weighs a lot a lot more a lot more than an adult okay number two how's cat's teeth are smaller yeah they do have those sharp teeth but if they bite you it's just going to be a little bite if a tiger bites you and that could be bad okay so they have very sharp and very long teeth then i said baby cats are called kittens in household cat land and baby tigers are called cubs so that's different the same is um, they both scratch. Um, my cats, I have little scratching posts around so that they scratch that and not my furniture. Um, and tigers, we saw they scratch the trees. Um, they can jump really high. Um, you know, my cats have no problem jumping up to things. Okay. Three, they carry their babies by their neck. So they, it's called a scruff. Um, cats have this little bit of extra hair, extra, extra um, like, like fat, I guess, near their neck. And it's just, 
where their mom can grab them and it doesn't hurt them. They're just being held that way. And they can move very quietly. Okay, so that's what I did. All right, we have our listening activity. This was our listening activity from last time. Okay, so it was a little tricky. It was a little challenging, but hopefully you got a lot of it. All right, this next picture um, is just a girl on a swing. So you want to draw that before you start. All right, so draw a butterfly on the branch. Draw grass under the girl on the swing. Draw a snail in the lower right corner. Draw a sun in the upper left corner. Draw a flower in the lower left corner. Draw a ladybug near the flower. Draw a butterfly flying in the sky. Draw a flower between the ladybug and the girl. And if you want, you can color the picture. And there you go. All right, writing. At some point in your life, you will think about what you want to be when you grow up. Think about a career that interests you. Maybe a career you've heard about, seen on TV, or read about in a book. Write a paragraph explaining what career you would choose and why. Okay, so if you want to be a chef, you could say that. Why do you want to be a chef? Explain that with all those juicy details. Um, any kind of job that you want, explain why. Okay. And um, we have Granny's Candies, last part. So last time we had... Um, these three pictures, what do they have in common? They are all forms of weather. Okay. And what do these have in common? We have lettuce, broccoli, and carrots. All right. I will see you next time.